you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do. Like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. I guess we'll just have to see what happens, but a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us.
you make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay, I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. 
If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no! I'm so sorry! Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? 
A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry! <laughs> With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark. And you die. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin, is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. You were the one who did us in, villain. Well, not you in the literal sense, but you did everything you could to stop us from rescuing her. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe it's because the entire world was at stake. No lone princess is worth that price. I beg to differ. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to take a deep breath and assume that whoever is making the decisions here has the common sense to ignore your protestations. Anyway, I believe your second question was What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? She would never. She's a perfect angel that you cruelly imprisoned as part of some convoluted, dastardly scheme. 
convoluted. I don't know how this premise could be any more simple. Princess bad, stop her, save everyone. That's right, you can't stop all of us. We're going to sweep her off her feet if it's the last thing anyone does. Are these really the sorts of people you'd like to align yourself with? <sighs> You're not at the cabin yet. You still have plenty of time to reflect on the situation. I just hope for all our sakes that you make the right call. Just be quick about it. She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. Maybe it's her beauty that threatens the world. Sure, it's her beauty. Why not? And before you ask, no, we can't just keep her down there. If you don't slay her, she's going to find a way out. It's unfortunate, I know, but it's just the way it is. People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to take me at my word. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh, I didn't know we were special. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? Calling us special isn't going to make us friends, even if it did feel nice. Oh, believe me, the last thing I want is for you and I to be friends. But I'm a professional, and I'm not going to let my dislike for you get in the way of helping you save the world. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Very different. Is it? I can't say I was paying much attention to the scenery last time around. 
Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. Stop letting yourself get distracted. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. I'm sure the princess would tell us there was a mirror if she were up here. In which case she'd be lying to you because, again, there isn't a mirror. But it does matter. Don't you care if we're being lied to? If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. But there was a mirror a second ago. And now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her. It was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but... What's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end. And now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. I'm sorry, 
Didn't you want me to? Did we? We warned her of the cruel forces seizing our body. That's practically telling her to kill us. She is our beloved, and she made the choice to free us of our misery, to show us mercy and make the best decision for everyone. She made the best decision for her. Don't be so quick to assign kindness. You're just opening yourself up to manipulation. died, and now we're talking. I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. you listening to her? That's a confession! Then I didn't end the world. See? She didn't confess anything. She is innocence itself. I'm not so sure. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. She took that in stride, to a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. That's because she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? She doesn't. There's no one else like me. I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. No, I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You'll what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? I would if you had a weapon. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings, and doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? You approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it, but I guess I have to. I told you, 
There's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? What do we do now? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had it all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. It's the only thing you've ever doubted, the actual truth. I think I want to leave, and I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection, and then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? I just want to make you happy. She can't just want to make us happy. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. I just want to make you happy. Is she broken? What's going on? What's going on is she's lying to you, only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? Okay, if that's what makes you happy. This isn't right. I don't know what's going on, but this isn't right. I fail to see the problem here. She's just sweet on us. You don't have to act like it's a big deal. I just want to make you happy. Is it just me, or does it feel like we're alone right now? Like we're the only ones here? our perfect match. She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it.
flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement, I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. Wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. My joy is in seeing what you choose. There are no wrong answers and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. The vessels are shaped by memories of you, but they are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them you are a gate to something more, and you are something more than that, too. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together and find new horizons to discover. I will long for your return but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again.